morning, everybody. It's Dr. Galvin with another uh, post ER night shift update about what's going on in the world of COVID and um, in North Carolina. I uh, worked this whole weekend and uh, the big difference we saw were, were quite a few COVID patients. Again, saw a bunch last night. Um, fewer last night than the, the night before, but cases you know across the country are kind of exploding uh, of the Delta variant. Very contagious. Um, almost exclusively affecting people who are not immunized. We have lots of discussion on the YouTube page and Facebook about immunizations, but I've been asked a few times about, um, more than a few times about what I think about getting immunizations to kids who are less than 12. And, you know, why do we want to do that? We'll talk a little bit about that and, and what the safety profiles look like and what, you know, what that looks like for a rollout potentially in the fall for kids. Um, right now, we are the vaccines are approved to prove to use, be used down to 12, but um, Pfizer and Moderna are doing studies at ages much lower than that. And the thought is that they're going to have enough data to probably approve um, immunizing ages five through 11 sometime in the fall, before you know potentially when school starts or soon after. Um, we know that the profile of the vaccines are very very safe, and I'm going to talk a little bit about actual side effects because I'm, I'm going to give you a little little heads up all the anti-vax people doctors are not seeing these side effects uh, I've, I've polled many doctors none of us have actually seen any vaccine related side effects other than maybe a little bit of complaints of, of flu-like symptoms the day after getting the vaccine um, you know and my specialty um, is a very you know it's a relatively small family and we're on the cutting edge man we see if, if there's a problem out there it's going to be seen in the emergency department first we all talk to each other we have national message boards and i'm telling you vaccine side effects are not something we see in the emergency department vaccine related deaths are not something we see in the emergency department because they're just not really happening but again i'm going to come back to that you know why do we want kids to get immunized um because you know the risk is less you know we know that the the um ACE2 receptor that the virus binds to is expressed much less in children. That's why they have less viral loads and that's why they tend to not get as sick. But at that, that being said, you know, there's been 4 million pediatric cases of COVID and of that around 400 deaths. And so, you know, one, any death in a child is concerning. Now, a lot of those more severe COVID cases are in kids that have underlying medical problems, primarily asthma, obesity and diabetes and so those are the kids that and, and you know are immunocompromised in some way um but those kids are also at risk of long covid um i have had a discussion with one of the pediatric doctors uh, downtown here they're seeing quite a bit of misc which is that multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children that's associated with covid infections and it's, it can be potentially dangerous those kids generally are not dying but they end up you know in the icu so they're, they're pretty sick uh, but recovering um and the other big concern is the spread to others we've got a very very um potently infectious agent that is much more infectious than the, the original version of the, of the virus. And so if a bunch of kids go to school and get exposed to each other and get infected, then they have the potential to spread it quite a bit farther. So I think that decisions about those age kids really has to rely on the science. And hopefully we're gonna have results from these initial studies, but the preliminary results are very, very good. And so um, I think that we may be able to make a good recommendation for kids under 12, probably age five to 11, um, sometime in the fall based on positive data from the studies. Let's talk a little bit more about those side effects and deaths that, you know, I keep getting bombarded. With. We talked about the VAERS database yesterday and how you can't use those reports to, to attach causality. Yet I've got these people who have no, don't do anything in medicine. They've never taken care of a patient in their lives. And they're telling me that, you know, 50,000 people have died of the, from the vaccine and there's been a million, you know, horrible side effects. Well, the weird thing is that none of us have seen it. And I've polled in the last, over the last weekend, I've asked about 20 doctors. I go, has anybody, I've, I've asked everybody the same question. Have you taken care of anybody in the hospital or in your private practice who was there because of a problem related to the vaccine? And out of 20, zero zero um and not only that but 
you know, my emergency medicine group, we haven't seen anybody that's been admitted to the hospital with a vaccine related problem. So if indeed these side effects are so prevalent, why is it they're not being reported? The reason they're not being reported by doctors is because we're just not seeing them. And let's look at the, the serious ones. What serious side effects do we worry about? Well, you know, one of them are the blood clots that we're seeing with the J&J &J vaccine. And what we had were 38 confirmed cases of these unusual blood clots out of 12.5 million doses, okay, 38 had a serious side effect. And there were a couple deaths, we think three deaths related to that um, out of, you know, over 12 million doses. Um, the other thing that was associated with, with Johnson & Johnson is a, a small number of men over 50 developed Guillain-Barre, which is this ascending paralysis that is usually self-limited, but can be very scary. It can end up people, you know, temporarily being on a ventilator in a really, really severe case of it. Um, there were 100 cases reported out of, again, 12.8 million doses. The last thing is this myocarditis, pericarditis that we've talked about, and this has happened in men, um, and young men um, associated with the, the mRNA vaccines. Um, we've had uh, 633 confirmed cases out of 200 plus million doses. So you can see that those are the serious side effects and they're, they're mild. And you know, um, myocarditis, you know, can be a, certainly a problem, but pericarditis, which is inflammation of the lining of the, uh, that surrounds the heart, you know, how, I mean, most of those cases, you know, what we treat that with anti-inflammatory medicines and, uh, you know, mo many of those people don't even get admitted. So a pericarditis is not that big a deal in most cases. A myocarditis, which affects the actual heart, can be, but the vast majority of the people that were studied were discharged, meaning that they had mild cases. So we're talking about very, very minuscule numbers of side effects that are really life-threatening. Um, and working doctors are not seeing them. And I would challenge you to ask your own primary care doctor if you know a doctor who who sees, you know, actual sees sick people, a primary care doctor, emergency medicine, critical care, inpatient medicine, internist, something like that, someone who actually takes care of actual sick people, ask them, how many, you know, vaccine related problems have you seen? And I think you'll be surprised that most of them have not seen any because it's just really not that big a deal because the vaccines are very safe. And, um, you know, uh, we've, I've been talking about this for, for quite a long time. Um, I am exhausted. I'm gonna call it quits here. I'll be back next week with another update. Um, hopefully that answers some of the questions about the, the under 12 and I'll keep updating that as more information is available. I'm Dr. Galvin. Uh, I'm a board certified emergency medicine doctor. I also run a wellness practice in, in Charlotte. Um, if you are interested, please follow me on Facebook and, and YouTube. Stay safe, wash your hands, wear your masks, look out for yourselves, your other, look out for others, and look out for your families, and I'll talk to you soon. Good night.